And these tiny flies reveal secrets about our parents' shortcomings. Cell biologist Anita Ust is studying whether a parent's eating habits affect not only their own health, but also the health of their children. And to do this, she searches for the answer deep inside the cells of fruit flies. All living things, flies like people, inherit their traits from their parents. There is a fixed set of genes found in all of our cells. And these genes control how we look and how our bodies function. But we don't use all of our genes. And which ones are active can be influenced by how we live. For example, what we eat. This is called epigenetics, and it can then be passed on to our children. So I want to find these epigenetic changes that can explain how the father's high sugar diet can increase the risk for his children to be overweight. I think the big challenge now is to find the exact molecule that makes this happen. And there is a million of molecules to choose from. Anita Ust became a scientist quite late in life. She worked for a long time in an ordinary office. But then something happened, which made her curious about our legacy. I got these uh, ideas when I had children on my own. I started to think that maybe you inherit not only the genes from your parents, but also some information about the parents' environment. And in this way, the children should be a little bit prepared for the environment they are born into. Anita is choosing to focus on research now and today leads her own research group at Lin Sheping University. In addition to scientists, her lab co-workers also include flies. These fruit flies are great to study because they propagate quickly. That way, the scientists can easily follow changes over several generations. And they actually are a lot like people. Fruit flies are humans. We don't look much alike. But when it comes to the genes, we're surprisingly similar, and especially the genes coding for metabolic proteins. So this is something that is very well preserved through evolution. Every living organism needs to cope with this uh, problem, how to store energy when there is uh, plenty of food, and how to release it when there is little. So now I up sockeret. Anita puts extra sugar into the fly's food, but only for the males. An altered diet for the females would be too complex to follow. The scientists know that the sugar will increase the weight of the males, but how does it affect the weight of the fly's offspring? Anita's team is looking to find out. So now I have my male flies, and I will flip them over to the females. And uh, now they will have some time to mate. Soon comes the next generation of fruit flies. The new flies are fed a normal diet. Then they are frozen and mixed with a solution that reveals how much fat they have. So here we can see that uh, the more fat the sample contains, the deeper color we get. And what we've seen before is that if the father has been eating high sugar diet before mating, his sons get a little bit fatter. And this is something they must have inherited them from the father. The ability to become overweight has indeed been transferred from the fathers to their children. But how has this happened? The food we eat doesn't affect the genes themselves, but perhaps how the genes are used. This is called epigenetics, and it controls which genes of our DNA are to be turned on and off. If we eat a lot of sugar, it can alter this process and ultimately affect our weight. And this change can then be inherited by our children. So it's possible that we will continue to see an increase in overweight and obesity. And uh, already now, this is a huge problem with more people around the world being overweight and obese and dying from diseases related to it than people dying from starvation-related disease. 
So this is a huge worldwide problem. Hey, Magnus. Hello. Now, Anita wants to find out exactly how this is controlled inside our cells. So at the moment, we're trying to find the exact molecule that makes this happen, and we think we're onto it. So we think this is a group of molecules that can transfer information from DNA to the cell, but they can also affect epigenetics. This molecule is also found in humans. Anita's research team continues now with a test group of men, increasing their sugar intake for a week. They'll be drinking three extra liters of soda every day. Then she will study to see if their sperm contains the same changes as those found in the molecules of the fruit flies. So we think we'll find the similar changes in humans since uh, the flies and the human's genome are pretty much the same. Anita's research team continues the hunt for the molecule that transmits the risk of becoming overweight from parent to child. Their hope is to stop this dangerous spiral from continuing into the future with an ever-increasingly overweight population. So I hope that if we understand how these epigenetic programs are made, that we also can find uh, medicines that target these epigenetic enzymes, and by that we can treat obesity and overweight. I think that would be really amazing. <laughs> <laughs>